Uh, as I have been introduced, that my name is Dr. Sufik Bala, and I'm working at present. Uh, presently, I'm working as professor of media studies at International Islamic University. <clears throat> I've been told that I'm being given uh, one and a half hour to discuss uh, today's session, which is in fact on hybrid media warfare. Uh, we will be discussing hy hybrid media warfare, its current state, and uh, how it has been used recently again in Pakistan. Uh, and also, of course, I will be starting with <clears throat> the, you see, philosophical discussion of what exactly is hybrid more media warfare and how it could be distinguished from the fifth generation warfare, which is a very common term these days. You probably are listening it everywhere, probably in newspapers, articles, and various discourses that you come across with. So you can very easily, you see here, that fifth generation media warfare is also being discussed over there. So my uh, scheme of presentation would be, uh, today scheme of presentation would be based on five, in fact, different areas. Number one, to introduce you that what exactly is uh, hybrid warfare. And the second thing would be to understand you that what is what are the differences? I mean, the major differences that would be there between the hybrid warfare and fifth generation warfare. I mean, I will try to distinguish it because these are uh, innocently and somehow mistakenly uh, uh, mixed together and interchangeably being used by media discourses. And the third thing is uh, that what are the commonly used tools that are, uh, you see, implied in the hybrid media warfare, in today's hybrid media warfare, you can say. And uh, fourth thing would be highlighting some of the recent, quite recent facts where these tools have been implied uh, in the hybrid media warfare, I will be giving you some examples from the uh, current situation and international level, of course, current situation. And the fifth and the last one would be to see that how we can counter or how we can safeguard ourselves against uh, this kind of, you see, media warfare, or you can say the hybrid warfare. So I would start with uh, that exactly what exactly is uh, hybrid warfare. Uh, before understanding uh, hybrid warfare, if uh, we just have a look at the various kinds of, you see, various various generations that war has been categorized normally, we call it as, for example, first generation warfare. In first generation warfare, it was something like the war and the invasion, they were in fact coupled together. I mean, you had to wage a war to invade an area and occupy an area. And this was usually done through traditional means and through traditional weapons. And usually it, it has been in, in, in a linear fashion. You see, uh, the, the people, I mean, the armies were in, in column and zone fashion, and they had to, of course, fight with each other to occupy and to defeat one, one another. So this was, in fact, the, uh, um, using very traditional kind of weapons at that time. So this was considered as the first generation war. And the second and third generation warfare was in fact where the traditional weapons were also used and radio was then again implied. I'm now talking about something like um, end of the 18th century or 19th century. So where the submarines were also used, uh, ships were also used uh, and uh, uh, weapons like uh, guns and these kind of things were being used and small scale uh, uh, non-traditional weapons like other than the nuclear and hydrogen bombs things were also there in the in the battlefields. The fourth generation warfare, in fact, uh, was considered to be as uh, a warfare. You, know, you can take it something like uh, the, the Second World War where the uh, media was also used as a weapon in the warfare. The propaganda was used and um, you see the battle of airwaves in, the, in European countries, you can uh, see that this kind of thing was also there. Radio was very heavily implied, I mean, you can take example, rather it could be taken as a case study that how radio-free Europe was used as a weapon of, you see, mass deception. I mean, this was basically used as, as a propaganda tool in the Second World War. And fifth generation warfare, I mean, this is the place where, in fact, I wanted very quickly to reach to. That is, in fact, a warfare where the social media, the disinformation, and the propaganda, and the fake news industry, and these kind of things are all implied in the uh, fifth generation warfare. Uh, I want to say something that um, fifth, in fifth generation warfare, you in fact wage your war through these kind of media first. And then if there is a possibility and if you want to go for any kind of, you see physical invasion of any country, then you can go for it. But you have to first sell the war and you have to make the people and the countries, those who are being fact, in fact getting under your attack, 
they have to be first maligned, they have to be first make belittle. Very recent example, of course, the Gulf War is there. So before you started the Gulf War and you invaded Iraq, I mean, I'm talking about the NATO forces and the American forces. So they had to, in fact, sell this war to the entire world. And they said this thing that <clears throat> Saddam Hussein has the weapon of mass destruction. The whole world, in fact, got together to, to, to destroy it, uh, that particular country. So this was otherwise not possible unless you have to sell the war before the war is actually waged. Same as in fact cases of Afghanistan, the, the toppling of the Twin Towers and of course the linking with the Afghanistan and the people those who were living in the caves of Afghanistan, they were the actual perpetrator, perpetrator of you see downing the Twin Towers over there. So this kind of you see situation was creating in the world and then there was of course no problem at all. The people allowed it, the entire world allowed you to go and you see destroy the entire country. So this was only possible when you had these kind of, you see, media and propagation and mass deception level things with you. So if you had not implied them, of course, you had not been able to, in fact, wage this kind of war over there. So fifth generation war is, in fact, first implying the hybrid warfare before they actually move to the borders of any country and actually, actually uh, uh, invade any country. So invasion is usually followed uh, uh, after, uh, followed by, uh, you see, invasion is followed uh, by the hybrid warfare. If uh, you do not win hybrid warfare, of course, you won't be able to then go for fifth generation warfare. So this is a, you see, a kind of, you see, difference between the two as well, that fifth generation warfare is in fact, you see, combination of some kind of, you see, kinetic means that are implied in a war, as well as the subversive means. Now, you kinetic means you can say that the physical invasion that you in fact are trying to put into, for instance, the weapons and uh, the destruction and uh, the sabotage activities and all these kind of things are there. But before you do anything like that, of course, you have to do something subversive acts as well. And subversive acts, I have just given you an example of some of the subversive acts where, where you are in fact trying to, trying to make a country as an enemy to the humanity, an enemy to you, Without that, of course, you, you won't be able to then do anything like that. Because now this is a very democratic uh, uh, kind of world where the, everyone knows everything. Now, once the people know it, so they would, of course, uh, uh, create some kind of resistance in your way to wage any kind of physical war. So avoid that kind of resistance. You have to sell the war before you actually wage the war. And of course, hybrid warfare is something that, that helps you to wage this kind of war uh, with the help of different kind of media, social media, uh, traditional media, uh, creating a kind of, you see, rumors or propaganda, or you can say, uh, it is something, I, I, I use the word that has been used by Edward Bernays sometime in 1925-26. He was saying before you actually wage a war, you have to, in fact, create war on the people. You see, you might have heard the war on terror. You see, this was a term which has been used by Bush when he waged a war uh, on terror in different parts of the world. So this was the first time when uh, Bernard, Edward Bernays was saying, war on the people is a necessity before you create war on any country or war on terror or something like that. So of course, this was something there even in the past, even um, immediately after the first uh, world war, you, you have many examples like that. Rather, I would request you, uh, my all the participant officers, I would request them that if they can possibly read a book that has been written by Noam Chomsky, The Spectacular Achievements of Propaganda. Uh, this is a great book, you must read. It's a very small book. I mean, this would be hardly of 150 pages, but giving a lot of examples from the past where the, you see the actual war followed before the virtual war was in fact waged. So if you do not wage the virtual war, you cannot have actually the actual war because now the people have become, you see, somehow savvy on what is happening around them. This is not an old age where the people did not have any knowledge that what's going on around, around, around them. Even they did not know that what, what's going on in the neighboring town. But you now understand that what's going on even in, in the Manhattan, New York. <laughs> uh, you, can, you, can, you can know everything with the help of this kind of media now. So, this is now hard to sell the war, but of course, at the same time, with the help of media, this has become very easy to reach to everybody. And I, I can give you so many examples later in this lecture today that how uh, different kind of media have been used to, in fact, invade people's mind uh, and help them uh, behave in a certain way. So I will be giving you certain examples about that as well. 
in when we talk about hybrid warfare this is something like you see the mixture of different kind of techniques that are regular irregular economic political social cultural so all kind of you see techniques are being used in the hybrid warfare uh, you have to just know it that uh, in hybrid warfare this is not possible that uh, you actually wage a war you have to wage a war on on certain fault lines of a society for instance if you take example of pakistan so you see cultural and social and these kind of you see fault lines are quite easy to be exploited i mean for instance pakistan has a very very unique cultural diversity and if you use this cultural diversity which could be otherwise a beauty you can use this as something which can in fact disintegrate us which can in fact uh, you see uh, create a kind of you see problem in our overall cultural fabric Uh, cohesion is destroyed the integration of the country and culture is destroyed by calling one cultural entity as somehow you see uh, inferior to the other cultural identity you, you you can take many examples in this case for example i was uh, uh, working on a research project and i was uh, looking at it that how pakistan television is contributing uh, into culturally integrate the people so once i visited uh, some parts of my country and uh, visited for instance uh, kp and uh, discussed this matter with with the with people over there that how do they feel about it so they say that this is not a pakistan television this is a punjab television you see because they see that whenever we are shown on television program in television programs we uh, always see that uh, a pakhtun is shown in in a very you see uh, low level characters he is either shown as a god as someone who is selling some very cheap things in the market or in the streets and uh, never shown in a very you see uh, a central role or very important role same is when i went there uh, to balochistan to ask them that how do they feel about the pakistan television tv programs i mean the i'm talking about the um, entertainment gala i'm not talking about the news and thing like that so they also had of course the same feeling that we see in pakistan television only either the Now, the low trod and bloch are there, or the bloch nights are there, and nothing else. We can see something which is, in fact, the real that exactly existing in our land or in our whole promise. We do not see those kind of reflections in Pakistan television programs. Same as the case with people from interior Sin. They were saying that either we are Hari or we are Sardar, and nothing else. So you see, these kind of things are also there, and this could very easily be exploited. You see, we have different. Uh, 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 what you call it as a different cultural identities are there and instead of using those different identities as something that in fact reflect a very colorful picture of the society of pakistan uh, rather this is shown something like uh, uh, or can be exploited by some of our enemies around us those who can in fact use it as a fault line and can exploit it and create problems among us so make one cultural bilateral Uh, in comparison to other and that would of course be then resulting some kind of you see cultural clashes between the country same is with the economy you can you can say you can take many examples where the economy is being used as as a cultural or a, you can say as a hybrid warfare tool where you can see now uh, for instance 2008 uh, where the economy was uh, completely trashed i mean the whole world economy was completely trashed by some of the people um sitting somewhere in wall street heavily paid economists and they played with the you see uh, economic uh, uh, system of the world and created havoc and that can very easily be found out if you i, I just give you an example rather uh, i would suggest you to watch the documentary that is called inside job there would you would see a lot many things that are going on there and they will show you that how that kind of economic impasse was created in the entire world and pakistan was of course witness to that i'm i'm, I'm i still remember at that time i was mostly in europe in uh, uk and other parts uh, of europe so i was amazed that the stipend that i was receiving over there that was 1500 dollar and when it was converted to euro or in pounds that was 700 pounds only but at the end of 2008 that reached to 950 pounds you see that kind of thing is not possible because their 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 currencies are not so heavily fluctuating but within one year that happened that things have gone down there so the the economic i mean economic terrorism could also be created 
and with the, with with this kind of you see hybrid warfare that can also be used so in 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 in, in, in you can say that hybrid warfare the fault lines are identified and then these fault lines are exploited for creating some kind of chaos in a society and in pakistan of course there are a huge number of fault lines sectarianism could be used as a fault line talbanization could be used as a fault line bla could be used as a fault line cultural problems could be used as a fault line identity of pakistan even itself could be used as a fault line so our enemy and the perpetrators those who could in fact wage a war against pakistan they very easily they can very easily use this kind of hybrid warfare tools and 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 create a situation in the country so we have to be of course uh, uh, very clear about that that hybrid warfare could be in fact uh, exploiting or could be in waged with the help of these kind of fault lines available so all kind of needs are this the, the, the tools with the help of which the arm uh, normally uh, uh, hybrid warfare is waged uh, all kind of media could be used especially the social media and these social media are used to exploit these fault lines and develop some kind of you see trends maybe on twitter maybe on facebook maybe on using other kind of media so trends are normally used a uh, trend has developed and with the help of which people started thinking in certain way in certain fashion you see uh, in this mind nowadays the realities are actually not being 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 shown to the people you have to construct the realities in the tabula rasa i mean with these are clean tables that are available in every mind mind everyone minds on various issues so you have to of course set your own uh, things set make thing make arrangements according to your own needs and what kind of results you would like to have out of you see interaction of the people out of the thing that you are exposed to these can very easily be set over there with the help of media so media are now the constructor of the realities now reality do not matter actually what is happening probably that would not be as such be shown to the people rather that would have been shown in certain certain frames how to interpret it this is not you to interpret it rather it is someone behind the media or the media they are in fact to produce they are in fact to manufacture it but let me give you an example for uh, while talking this thing this is a very good example to be quoted over here uh, with the apology to some of my friends around um, in this room they might they might feel some offensive on that but this is something very important to be given over here to make you understand that how how these media are being used and who is in fact who are in fact behind these kind of things you can very easily uh, you see understand this whole thing once uh, uh, new york times chief of staff you see new york times is uh, one of the uh, very important uh, media organization and as a global media organization that has in fact uh, a say or you can say a power to alter or to discourse generate a discourse even in the Uh, most uh, powerful assemblies of the world even the united nations so once the chief of staff once his name was john stunton when john stunton was asked about it that uh, you are holding uh, the powers are the chair of a very big media organization having reach in almost every nook and corner of the world how do you feel yourself of course you would feeling yourself a very powerful person because you are the one who are making trends in the media debates you are the one in fact who are making the presidents of the country and of course uh, enemies uh, to to some other people may be made enemies by you as well so this is a very powerful position that you are holding so how do you feel so his response was very interesting and he said i really don't feel myself that powerful of course i look like a very powerful person but most of the time while sitting on my chair i feel myself an intellectual prostitute who probably is being used by who i really don't know because there are very powerful invisible players the actors in the system that use me and i really don't understand that how do they use me um but but i feel that i'm being used by them sometimes some kind of trend is being given and i have to follow those trends that don't follow of course i do not survive in the market sometimes that kind of you see narrative is built up in the system if i do not follow that narrative then i am left nowhere probably people will not read my newspaper so for the survival of my organization of my paper and to be heard among the people i feel myself most of the time trapped into those narratives so i have to of course discuss and carry on those narratives so his thing was in fact his main point that he wanted to in fact highlight was that no not always i'm the one who are making things i'm sometimes made to make certain things happen make to develop certain things so you see uh, uh, there are you see very um, if uh, uh, you people have a time i would request you to please uh, watch two very important documentary 
by John Pilger. John Pilger, Pilger is in fact a war correspondent and uh, he has uh, two very phenomenal uh, documentaries he uh, produced. One is The War You Don't See. This is a very good documentary and uh, that will help you understand that how media war a hybrid warfare is usually waged and has been of course waging uh, waged by various parts of the world, the various powerful players of the system. The War You Don't See by John Pilger. And that is a quite recent one. He is taking example from Iraq war and uh, Afghanistan war, that how the people have been embedded with the forces over there and what kind of things they were to report. And very interestingly, you will see that the most known uh, faces, I mean, the journalists, those who have been working for CNN and those who have been working for BBC and CNBC and other media, international media organizations, those who were actually making people understand the situation of war in Afghanistan, the situation of war uh, in Iraq. Uh, so they were apologizing and they were saying that we have been used and we have been used badly by some of the very invisible forces in the system. So the, this example is, uh, uh, could be quoted uh, as a hybrid warfare. Uh, where the journalists even and the media organizations have been used and uh, there were some very powerful institutions that were behind them. So uh, hybrid warfare is in the fact, so you see a very all-encompassing, all kind of media, all kind of fault lines, all kind of things could be used into that. I mean, probably um, uh, I would not have words to in fact overemphasize that how hybrid warfare has uh, excessively been used recently in the recent past, or you can say even the last 50 years. When, when the media, I mean, all kinds of media, like social media, like internet, like uh, um, television, uh, television is considered to be these days as a traditional and conventional media, but this has also been used as a very important tool for uh, creating, you see, negativities about one particular kind of society. Or you, can, you can take example of uh, uh, some of the movies that have been um, uh, in the last 50 or 70 years, those who were uh, produced by some of the players, international players, where some specially, uh, you see, creating some kind of special images of some particular communities of the world. For instance, uh, Arab Reel, I mean, uh, bad uh, concepts about the Arab, how these were constructed in, uh, uh, in uh, movies. So uh, this was not, in fact, altogether, you see, uh, capricious. I mean, people are not doing it without having any kind of, you see, special line in their minds before they were creating these things. So these were all in fact very well-defined kind of things with very well-constructed well and well-crafted objectives in view these were being done over there. And, and uh, Jack Shaheen, this is a very good name and his documentary and his papers are on internet freely available when he's talking about real bad Arabs. Real, R-E-E-L, real bad Arabs. Here you can see that how uh, different parts of the world at that time, social media were, of course, not there. With the help of movies, they created this kind of bad things about them. And uh, of course, this was uh, in the backdrop of, you see, 1960s war uh, between Israel and Arab. So Israel uh, has to be, of course, shown somehow separate to the entire world and the, as compared to uh, Arab, because Arabs are somehow, I mean, they produce in their, in their movies that Arabs are, you see, uh, low intellect people and they really do not have uh, clear understanding about things. They are entity women, they are entity to democracy, and uh, they have uh, no legitimized system of uh, controlling the societies and governing them. So these kind of, you see, negative things have always been created about them. And once the Israel was to wage a war against them, of course, the word of the people world had this kind of opinion about the Arabs. So that everything that was Israel was doing against that, that seems justified. So this kind of thing, of course, is uh, uh, have been in use uh, since long, and this is also one aspect of the hybrid warfare. And sometimes in hybrid warfare, uh, not essentially the enemy country himself or itself is in fact waging a war, rather they are using different kind of proxies in the war. For example, in case of Pakistan, you have a very uh, uh, few things very visible. Uh, TTP, of course, uh, uh, from where the TTP is getting funding and uh, from which uh, part of the world they are being supported, the intellectual support, uh, uh, the moral support and uh, ammunition support and financial support. Of course, they since long have been using uh, these kind of negative activities or these kind of uh, things they are doing in Pakistan. So from where they are getting this support. So this kind of, you see, proxy war, instead of you see a foreign or alien 
army is coming to you, your own people or group of people have been used against you. Same as in case of Daesh and ISIS and BLA and these kind of, you see all institutions that could be used as, as proxies within your own society to wage war against yourself and to, of course, uh, create a kind of uh, a problematic situation in the country. So uh, next thing is very important, the negative narratives are also being used. Now, negative narratives means Pakistan ne hame kya diya hai? Uh, if the Taliban, for example, are to do something, then they are in fact creating this kind of narrative. We want Sharia and law and Islamic system and Islamic justice system in Pakistan. Now, who would deny that this kind of thing should not be there? You see, this kind of uh, very universal kind of things are being shown to the people and shown through the media that we want to see Sharia and Islamic law. So being Muslim, of course, I would not dare doing anything and dare doing anything against this. I would not say that, yes, I do not like being a Muslim and living in a Muslim country. I would not say that I would not like to have Islamic and Sharia law system in my country. So this is a very universal kind of, I mean, there is hardly any rebuttal to that. Once this kind of very uh, universal kind of thing is being portrayed to you and so generic informed things are being given to you, you would hardly deny it. So uh, this kind of, you see negative, uh, are, uh, you can say, and narratives are being used. And uh, sometimes they in fact trapped you in the narratives. I mean, if they want you to go for some kind of action, so they in fact create a situation for you that you have no other option except to go for it. If you do not do it, of course, then even then you are having some negativities from your own people. And if you do it, the result Excuse of me, sir. And 84 Twitter handles generated nearly one third of the total tweets. 84 hand handles only. You see, here you can see that the miracle that in fact uh, are being played by these social media tools. Is similarly, uh, I give you another example like surgical attacks. Uh, this was a very common term in media and India has waged surgical attacks in Pakistan. 52 Twitter handlers created more than 30% of the tweets about, uh, about uh, you know, surgical attacks, and that were all from India. How interesting is the fact, in fact, we have to, in fact, locate and attack and bring these things to the people and to the world, and we have to get this published. And uh, there is another study that was showing that 15% of the tweets were bots from India on Twitter, 15% tweets were bots. I mean, trolls were not there. These were computer generated. And uh, uh, that was the, in fact, reason when the Twitter blocked more than 70 million Twitter handles. Why? Because they were all being used by various computers and various companies and we had peer forms to create kind of, you see, inimical situation for a particular society. So this kind of thing you see is very common. Now, uh, uh, the last point that I, because I feel that I have gone too long on monologue kind of, thing, I would like to take questions as well. Um, the last point, very, very shortly, I would say that how to safeguard our national interest in, in this hybrid warfare situation. How, how, what are our responsibilities? How should we do, how should we counter it? Very quickly and uh, just in bullet form, I would say, number one, we have to, create space for the critical thinking. We, if we are just uh, the followers are not able to question things, of course, we'd be swayed away by the propaganda that is, you see, of course, all around us, against us. The second thing is among our people, and especially those who own the media, those who run the media, the journalists, and all those who are in the policy making, all those who are in fact making people opinion to think or make them understand, I mean, the political leaders and the opinion leaders, we have to, you see, wage a huge, a massive campaign about nationness in their activities. You see, in the world, this is very common. There seems to be something very high sounding to call about it that I'm a nationalist, I, I, want, I love my country, but doesn't mean that I need to, need to, need to talk about that, what nationalism is all about. You see, in the United States, journalists talk, talk about it, that how to report good about the things that are related to the US foreign affairs across the borders. They are open to talk about things within their own country. Whatever the habit that you would like to play within the political system, really, they don't have any problem. But once it comes to outside the boundaries of the United States, they will always be towing the foreign affairs and the foreign office lines. 
you see but unfortunately we have a problem whenever something goes on in the in, in india so we come and we uh, you see bring kasab from our own land and say that he is not one doing anything bad about us so i think we have to have you see this kind of thing in that whatever whether this is positive or negative when it comes to my country and my foreign office and my national security issues that i must be standing with the state i should not be played in the hands of the people those who want to use for their own purposes uh, 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 second thing is the media diplomacy i have been most uh, uh, very very often i have been talking about it that now the diplomacy and the foreign services they all be coupled together and there are certain examples in the world as well i mean uh, information service and uh, foreign service they have to have you see uh, close relations with each other uh, their diplomatic means now should be uh, you see constructed or should be developed with the help of media uh, i i have given you many examples uh, when i were i come to information service academy and uh, address the professionals i most of the time talk about or talk about it that now the foreign service and the information they have to be coupled together and they have to be educated and modern lines that how to in fact uh, Uh, create a good image of Pakistan. You see, foreign diplomatic means are also doing same thing what we are trying to do. So we have to have you see some kind of you see uh, common strands available between us and commonly trained to be able to understand that how to promote the image of Pakistan across. We have more than ninety two missions, uh, missions of Pakistan in, in in different foreign countries. So uh, once I'm I'm there as a press counselor over there, so I must interact. very uh, closely with the ambassador to create a good image of pakistan in the media of those country by giving them feel about pakistan you see pakistan has the highest peace keeping forces in the world and every day they are they doing good things but while while these good things are not conveyed to the people over there because i find that there are so many journalists those who are lack of stories today if i am going to tweet them by sitting in their own country in the embassy of pakistan i might be in fact creating space for pakistan's discourse and pakistan's discussion in their media and that would ultimately of course help in building image of pakistan in a better way so uh, of course uh, this is something which is very important to be done uh, the second very important thing is the media literacy we need to teach people that whatever comes on media all is not right all is not true so we have, we have to make them understand that how to check the facts that they come across on media their the authenticity of the facts that are coming so this is this could be done with the help of media literacy and this kind of subject is being introduced even in the schools in the developed world they in fact let the let people and the children learn to verify the facts we unfortunately i i i honestly uh, come uh, visit various places and uh, i ask them if you come across any video how do you check it is authenticity Do you know any tool with the help of which you can check the authenticity of a video, or uh, any information? There are you see in abundance huge tools available, huge number of tools available, free of cost available. You can check whether this is something new or something that happened in the past and is being reproduced in a different tag and different caption for you. We have to know check it, and there is some kind of you see media literacy all required. The next very important thing is that we need to have think tanks. or unfortunately think tanks has become a very fashionable thing in pakistan and most of the times i find people those who really do not have you see a thinking background <laughs> they are in fact heading the think tanks so this is something very unfortunate at institutional level at governmental level we need to have think tanks at every ministry for instance there should be a think tank in information ministry there should be a think tank in economic ministry i think there should be having a think tank in 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 interior ministry there should be uh, there should be some think tanks which is in fact helping them devise their policies because those who are holding the positions they are most of the time busy in handling daily day to day affairs but looking into the future peeping into something beyond the walls looking things into a uh, far or distant future that is in fact job of the think tanks and everywhere in the world you see think tanks are there and that are supporting the organizations and the ministries so we hardly find i mean i just give you an example we hardly have anything to talk about i mean i do not see any school of propaganda that is in the entire country where is that we would be understanding that what kind of propaganda is being done against pakistan but in across the world you in develop world this is something very very common over there that they are thinking about these things and uh, 
setting the future of their nations. So this is this could be done with the help of some kind of things over there. There's some a very very important thing that we now encourage the international media, international level media in Pakistan operating from Pakistan. Why we don't have it from the private sector? Reason is basically the TRP, the target rating point. We have to in fact go from target rating point to IRP, impact rating point, where we have to in fact see that what is impacting the most. Not that how many people are going to see it, but how many people are there to absorb the information that are coming into you. And different kind of, you see, social media techniques could be used to understand that what is the impact of a program, not that how many people at one point in time is in fact watching a program. Because that becomes a, that becomes a very important tool to, to decide that what is to be paid to the, to the advertisers. So TRP has to be replaced with the IRP. I have a model for that, that how can IRP be implemented in Pakistan system. Once you do it, I believe you can change the entire scene of Pakistan, entire media scene of Pakistan, where not only the two politicians are, you see, put together in a program and they have to brawl with each other. Sorry, using this brawl word over there, but this is what we are now witness to. So instead of that, there should be some kind of people, those who know the things and let the people know about things as well in a, in a, in a very scientific and in a very, uh, you see, intellectual fashion things should be given to them. So unfortunately, I really do not see anything like that. So we have to have the international media and we have to create this. Kind of, I, I, I was in fact in some conference, I was giving an alternate model that instead of TRP, I mean, more the people, those who are attracting you, you are attracting and then selling them to the advertiser, there should be some kind of conflict index of every program of every channel. More the conflict in the channel, more the conflict in the program, less the revenue for should be there. And the organization, they are not more than 10. I really challenge it that there are more than 10 international organizations, those who are feeding to media in shape of giving them advertisements. And they have to make savvy on this, that what should be done by them, they should be in fact forced that as a CSR activity of their organization, CSR, corporate social responsibility, as a corporate social responsibility, they should not promote conflict in the TV channels by not in fact putting or diverting their advertising chunk to them. So reduce them if they are going high in conflict. Give to those, those who are creating something positive about Pakistan and doing something that something positivity are giving more, you see, space to the development journalism. So development journalism promotion is only in fact knitted with these kind of things that would be there. So with that, I think uh, um, uh, I, I, I would like to leave some time for my friends, those who you, they might have a question to ask about. Uh, this was just so you see kind of uh, disarrayed or what you call it, uh, uh, some off the cuff thoughts about uh, hybrid warfare, it's different tools, how it is being based. The most part of um, uh, your question was in fact comments and of course enlightening for us because you have divulged some of the things that were not in my knowledge and you uh, talked about them like uh, comparative tech report where you are saying that Pakistan has been played, Pakistan has been shown as the worst cyber security, uh, you see, country where we are at the bottom. I mean, we do not have uh, good cyber security systems available. Of course, I agree with this and I have of course been mentioning it to you uh, during my whole talk that Pakistan, we are very naive. We do not, in fact, plan yeah, that's, that's why we do not much about it. Uh, and the second thing, of course, uh, this is very important. And uh, I have uh, been, of course, talking about is my, <clears throat> a lot of, you see, video and talks. Uh, these are available on FATF and CPAC, and especially how our world is, in fact, constructing things around you, about China, about you. Uh, thanks God that uh, at least China is uh, with us on the CPAC issue, because whenever something comes against Education. CPAC in the world, so China is trying to counter Education them as level. we are a silent uh, I really do not see that we are doing much on this. Um, a couple of uh, uh, months back, I will say more than a year uh, back, I, I, I held a conference on CPAC, invited different uh, scholars from different parts mm -hmm. of the world. And they participated on this discussion that how, how narratives in the world are being, being created about CPAC and overall OBOR, I mean, the One Road, One Belt initiative or BRI initiative by China. And of course, Pakistan in this region is a very important country. So how to protect it from the negativities that are in fact ushering in, in the world media. 
So we talked about that, and unfortunately, these kind of discussions are not much and not very high level available in Pakistan. Although we have certain CPAC centers available, there is a you see a small think tank within the team. I think think of our office ISSI. Uh, this think tank is available to to work on it, and they are in fact uh, doing superfluous things. I do not say that they are looking deeper, dipping into the things that deeper into the things that how do. Word is in fact creating negative kind of sentiments about CBAC and over Uber initiative, and then Pakistan and China relationship in this case. And of course, uh, one other another initiative is also there by, by the government of Pakistan, where uh, CBAC uh, center uh, under the PIDE Pakistan Institute of uh, Development Economics. This has now become a university. They have also a, have a think tank available to work on this. But mostly, you see, these are I I really don't think that they are. Producing much of the literature on it and looking and watching the Western media, that what kind of narratives they are building. Because once you understand those narratives, then you are able to counter them. We are unable to understand the narratives, and we are unable to, in fact, watch them. So there is no question of, of course, countering them. We these are simply what you call it. I mean, these two things are simply the PR firms, which are in fact selling. The uh, CPAC initiatives to the people within Pakistan, not across the borders of Pakistan. This is my gut feelings about them, and then knowing them, what they are doing, because I have been somehow closely in contact with them. That, in fact, helped me understand that what kind of activities are there. Some of the organizations are doing, of course, some uh, international, what they call is an international uh, literature they are trying to produce, but that literature is not at all of international level, and they are not, in fact, very interesting thing. The institutions are working in complete isolation, not working with any university of the country where they, of course, the scholars are there, the PhDs are there, and they are to work on things like that. Are they are to, of course, take their help conducting researches and subject like that? So this is, in fact, through this question, I think this could be a proposal which may be given to them that they have to interact with the universities of Pakistan. Of course, there's a huge intellectual uh, manpower is there, and they could be used for uh, uh, the betterment of the country. Uh, the the next uh, and the last thing that you ask, this is very interesting. Of course, uh, I have been discussing this thing also, but this was somehow far off from our main ambit of the discussion. That's why I did not touch it. That is the video games. It's not only the video games, even the cartoons. We in fact lack knack about these things. We do not feel that they are very important things to be looked into. For instance, my son is most of the time busy doing things on internet and playing these games like PUBG and all this, and these all are showing negative things about. I mean, once an enemy is shown in the games, you see the structure and the overall attire of the enemy, his face, the way he appears to be. He would always be a bearded man, seemingly probably from the Arab world or from the Asian countries, and uh, of course, a Muslim. So this kind of thing, you see, my children are of course looking at them and behaving it like this that they are trying to you know shoot the enemy, and they are enemy in fact caricatured in our own way. That's why you see our small kids when they go outside and see someone very heavily bearded, bearded and having turban on their hats, they say, "Hey, Papa, look at him. He he seems to be a bandit." Then, our own children start creating this kind of situation for their own children. So I understand that this is very important for all of us to understand. This is very important for all of us to understand. कि हम इसमें कितना पैसा लगेगा कि आपको आपको इस किस्म के स्कूल्स खोलें लोगों को ट्रेन कराएं दुनिया के अंदर भिजवाएं और अपनी लोकल गेम्स करें अब गेम्स क्रिएट करें अब देखें सुपरमैन आपकी वेस्ट में दिया है चाइना ने आपका पोकोमैन दे दिया है दुनिया भूल गई है सुपरमैन को जो पोकोमैन उन्होंने बिना के दिया है जापान ने अपना वहां पर उनके लीडर्स जो क्रिएट करना शुरू कर दिए आपने वहां पर सेंड्रेला दिया है तो ईरान जैसे मुल्क ने भी अपनी लाइला आपके लिए क्रिएट करके रख दी है यार हमारे यहाँ क्या छोटा भीम देखेगा मेरा मेरे मेरे बच्चे कि छोटा भीम के कार्टून आ गए इंडियन कार्टून हैं इंडियन लफ्ज इस्तेमाल करें वही हम देखें ये बड़ा सेंसिटिव एरिया ऑनेस्टली आपने रेस की है कि मेरे यहाँ कार्टून हो गए गेम्स हो गई इस पे मुझे अपनी फ्यूचर जनरेशन का कोई ख्याल नहीं है कि मैं इस चीज को देखूं कि उनके लिए क्या चीज क्रिएट करने की जरूरत है हमें इस पे काम करने की जरूरत है आई फील दैट इज अज अबेंडेंट एरिया वी है टोटली बैरल एरिया वी हैव नॉट वर्क ऑन दैट We did not, unfortunately, create a single game जो कि दुनिया में किसी लेवल पे खेली जा रही हो हमारे अपने बच्चे उसको खेलने के लिए तैयार नहीं है तो इसके लिए कितनी मेहनत और कितना पैसा और कितनी कोई इंटेलेक्चुअल आपको इनपुट चाहिए सेंड पीपल आउटसाइड इन फॉरन यूनिवर्सिटीज मेक देम लर्न दीज थिंग्स एंड देन कम बैक एंड डू दीज थिंग्स फॉर यूर सोसाइटीज 
हमारे यहाँ क्या अपने अपने कोई आइडियल्स और आइडल्स की कमी है जिसको हम गेम्स के अंदर ले आके उनको ये क्रिएट करा के उनको अपने कल्चर के अंदर चीजें देख सके अनफॉर्चुनेटली दुनिया की बड़ी एग्जाम्पल मौजूद है जहां पर उन्होंने वेस्टर्न चीजों को अपने ऊपर सुपर इम्पोज नहीं किया और अपनी बनाई तो हम भी इस किस्म की चीज बना सकते हैं और यू हैव राइट टू पॉइंट इट आउट वी हैव टू वर्क ऑन दैट वी आल्सो हैव एन ह्यूमन कैपिटल अवेलेबल थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वेरी मच सर दिस इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पॉइंट आई हैव टॉक्ड अ लॉट अबाउट दिस फॉर एग्जांपल द फर्स्ट लाइन दैट यू वर टॉकिंग अबाउट इट दैट वी नीड टू हैव अ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इन आवर गवर्निंग सिस्टम सो दैट वी शुड नॉट बी रिलायंट ओनली ऑन सर्टेन इंस्टीट्यूशंस ओनली वन और टू इंस्टीट्यूशंस ओनली rather the whole country of course in that case of uh, anoki or in that kind of you see emergency like situation the whole country should be able to insert participate in this kind of you see cyber crimes or cyber warfare uh, you remember i have been talking about different fault lines you remember in my discussion i have been talking about different fault lines as we're talking about cultural fault line i was talking about social fault line. similarly you have just referred to it the religious uh, of course uh, fault line is also available uh, i was in fact taking the other way around when i was saying that sectarianism is of course one of the fault lines which can be exploited by our enemies so we have to of course reduce our own differences we have in fact to you see minimize and mitigate these kind of things which could come out of from them for instance if something is uh, uh, some decision has been taken by supreme court and then one religious faction people then get uh, you see on roads and they start exploiting those things and make people those who are living within the country you see their own city that help for them so we have to have you see uh, uh, some kind of see modernization in our religion and uh, modernization in doesn't mean that we have to of course uh, 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 re concoct the religion religion is always there and that should be in the same way i mean to say that we have to create an acceptability of an a differing opinion on religious affairs that is in fact something we are really on when ever it comes to religion we are the more orthodox, orthodox in our approach and those who have very logical and cogent thinking about things they even stop talking about that because they feel that whenever they say anything like that they would not be accepted or that they would be subject to very severe criticism and they they of course face some kind of life threat as well you see we have to in fact create an environment we have to in fact create a situation where intolerance has to be addressed you see i i always say that extremism and especially the religious extremism is in fact the most important component that would destroy us we would not need any outside enemy to destroy us rather the extremism extremism only and someone who can very easily exploit those extremist elements in our society they can create havoc for us i mean we do not need an enemy in the in, in in the presence of extremist mindset in society so we have to create you see openness and of course this openness is not uh, not something about one aspect of uh, our society rather that has to be i, I was think i was saying it critical thinking must be given some space in the society and critical thinking about religion should also be given space we have to in fact tolerate each other everything is right but in a different way we should accept the other ways right thing as well instead of opposing to it because it's not according to my way so that's not there this is not right this is not good so this kind of thing you see we need to have uh, the openness we have to have critical discussions in our institutions we have to have you see uh, open thinking forums open discussions in television programs our youngsters should create open minds i i most of the time say i really are not i'm not allowed to think in an open form freedom of thought is not available my 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 head most of the time i feel as shackled jaise wo kehte hai na ki dole shah ke chuhe bana ke rakh diya gaya hai hamare society ke andar ki yahan dimag ke andar shackles rakh diya gaya hai ki dimag hamara hamari isolation mein bhi hum kahin nahi so sakte isliye ki critical thinking kisi jagah par available nahi hai develop critical thinking forums make your schools and institutions open make your offices make your media open so that you can think critically and counter anything with your arguments aur har kisi ke paas ye ikhtiyar hona chahiye ki wo ek apni opinion ko de sake sir main aapki is baat ke sath yaad kar raha hu american universities mein hum hote the na 
हर बंदा इतना ओपनली स्टूडेंट्स के साथ डिस्कस करते थे हर बंदा इतना ओपनली डिस्कस करते थे किसी भी लफ्स को इस्तेमाल करते हुए उनके लिए प्रॉब्लम नहीं हुआ करता एक ओपन थिंकिंग जैसे लगता था कि दिमाग पे कोई बोझ नहीं है लेकिन यहाँ पे जब हम बात करेंगे हर वक्त ये ना जिसे आप कह सकते हैं ना वी फील अंडर दी बर्डन ऑफ सम काइंड ऑफ इनविजिबल इम्बार्गोज इन विजिबल रिस्ट्रिक्शन तो थाट्स भी हमारे जो है ना अनफॉर्चुनेट तो हमारी जब तक थाट्स फ्री नहीं होगी ये मूव फ्री नहीं होंगे उस वक्त तक मैं समझता हूँ कि ये सारी एक्सट्रीम चीजें हमारे खिलाफ चलती रहेंगी you see uh, we have i mean the in the earlier question uh, we have also been talking about it that uh, inclusiveness inclusiveness of course means that we have to accept others it's not something that uh, we are working in isolation and we on our own we consider that the only right person or only right uh, school of thought we have to accept other as well so uh, i i think uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, possible way out uh, you see you cannot of course fight uh, with uh, with with these kind of high tech war without having openness in your system otherwise you see they will exploit i mean the west or the your enemies will exploit your own fault lines in the system and they have of course uh, edge on it that they are more technically sound more technically advanced than you so they have more access to these kind of technological resources not able to find a solution so these technological institutions would be very high, highly would be used Simple. by them so we have left with no other option except to in fact create this and you see uh, in india bangalore is a silicon valley there and people are directly you can say this is considered to be asian silicon valley in bangalore where all kind of you human uh, resource is available they can from their uh, region reach to the international media and international channels and all kind of social media things are there and they are very easily controlling them so unfortunately which area which 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 city in pakistan that you call as a silicon valley which which part of this country has different you see uh, internet or you can say the social media or technological parks available unfortunately i mean we are not ready for to face these kind of things if they are to use you see high tech against us so we have to have of course uh, social cohesion openness inclusiveness and of course at the same time we have to develop our technological uh, fronts uh, too because without that uh, we won't be able to of course counter them aapne mera khayal hai ki solution to ek tarah se aapne sawal mein bata diya hai ki hame is mindset ko jisme hum ye samajhte hain ki only dictatorship is the solution of this country we know the best and the politicians don't know anything i mean until and unless this kind of situation and this kind of mindset will prevailing I don't think we would be able to uh, develop, of course. So, you see, you can say that from here to develop, it will be very difficult for us. And then, for us, to stop the world from stopping us, it will also be very difficult for us. I was thinking about this when you were asking this question. I was just recalling uh, the yesterday discussion that came to me. You know that it is very difficult to do this in such a time when you are in a country. डिक्टोरियल या डेस्पॉटिक काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स आर देयर टू प्रिवेल और पोलिटिकल ऑनरेस्ट हो पोलिटिकल सिचुएशन या एनवायरमेंट ऐसी हो जहां पर एक तरह से महसूस ही हो कि आपकी कोई स्पेस नहीं है यानी जिसे आप कहते हैं पोलिटिकल फ्रीडम और गवर्नेंस के जो हमारे मसाइल हैं डेमोक्रेटिक नॉर्म्स पूरी तरीके से नर्चर ना हुए हों जो हमारे पोलिटिकल इंस्टीट्यूशन हैं उनकी वैल्यू और रबर स्टेम की फॉर्म के अंदर अवेलेबल हो तो कितना आसान हो जाता है हमारे ही बंदों को हमारे खिलाफ इस्तेमाल करना मिसाल के तौर पर मैं आपको यू मे डिसग्री विद मी ऑन सर्टेन एस्पेक्ट खरिया खरिया अगर आप लोग देखते हो यूट्यूब पे आर एम टीवी चैनल लंदन से ऑपरेट होता है अब आप देखें आप ये ये मैं आप लोगों को बिल्कुल आप अगर जो लोग इससे एक्सपोज नहीं है तो दे कैन गो ऑन यूट्यूब एंड चेक इट आर एम टीवी लंडन और खरिया खरिया के नाम से प्रोग्राम शुरू होता है अच्छा ये हर दूसरे रोज प्रोग्राम हो रहा होता है और वो पाकिस्तानी है हमारा है हमारा ही खून है लेकिन चूंकि उसकी दिल के अंदर जो फीलिंग्स टुवर्ड्स सम ऑफ द इंस्टीट्यूशंस ऑफ माई सोसाइटी है वो बड़े आसानी से पता चल जाती हैं और कोई भी बंदा हमारा एनिमी उसको इंफॉर्मेशन फीड करना शुरू करता है और वो फिर इस पर आए में उसको डिस्कस करता है कैसे लगता है कि यस हम बहुत बड़े प्रॉब्लम में हैं और हमारे प्रॉब्लम्स की कॉज सिर्फ और सिर्फ एक ही है कोई दूसरी नहीं है 
और वो जो लफ्ज इस्तेमाल करते हैं कॉन्स्टेंटली एक तरह से हम हमारे मीडिया के अंदर हम इसको कहते हैं कि परसुएशन क्या है कि यू कीप ऑन टेलिंग समथिंग एंड हैज बीन अप्रूव बाय द पीपल यानी सर कहते झूठ इतना बोलो कि सच की गुंजाइश ही ना रहे हो वो झूठ ही आपको हर जगह प्रिवेल करता हुआ नजर आएगा अब मैं इसमें नहीं कहता कि वट एवर ही सेज इज ऑल टूगेदर रॉन्ग आई एग्री टू सर्टन पॉइंट ही इनफैक्ट मोस्ट ऑफ बट द क्वेश्चन इज दैट Uh, क्या ये हमारे अपने अंदर के लोग बड़े आसानी से इस्तेमाल नहीं होते और ये इस्तेमाल क्यों हो रहे होते हैं दिस इज इनफैक्ट द पॉइंट दैट यू हैव इन पॉइंटेड आउट कि हमारे यहाँ ये जो फ्रीडम ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन नहीं है पॉलिटिकल इंस्टीट्यूशन की स्ट्रेंथिंग का प्रोसेस नहीं है डिस्पॉटिक जो है ना वो फीलिंग्स हर जगह पे पाई जा रही होती है इंस्टीट्यूशन पे आपको किसको भिजवाया जाता है आज मैं uh, आपको बताऊँ कि हमारे यहाँ जो इंस्टीट्यूशन किस तरह से इस्तेमाल हुए हैं क्या ब्यूरोक्रेसी ने आपकी जिसे आप कहते हैं वर्चुअली एक कलम चोर हड़ताल रखी हुई है कि दे वुड नॉट टेक एनी इनिशिएटिव बिकॉज वंस दे टेक एनी इनिशिएटिव द नेक्स्ट डे दे आर बीइंग कॉल्ड बाय नैब एंड बाय द सुप्रीम कोर्ट एंड बाय दीज इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड दे आर हैंड अकाउंटेबल तो ऐसी सूरत हाल में मैं किस किस्म की आप एक्सपेक्ट करते हैं कि मैं कोई क्रिएटिव थिंकिंग जाऊँगा या मैं कोई क्रिएटिवली किसी मिसाइल के हल पेश करने की कोशिश करूंगा तो एक सिस्टम के अंदर जो सफोकेशन पाई जाती है ना हमें इस सफोकेशन को ब्रेक करने की जरूरत है बिकॉज यू सी दिस इज मेक एन मॉर गेम नाउ अगर हम फॉर इंस्टेंस के अगर आज इसको एड्रेस नहीं करते तो वट वुड बी सोशन नेक्स्ट टेन इज टाइम वी हैव यू सी गैदर्ड मोर एनिमीज अराउंड आज दैन फ्रेंड्स तो ऐसी सूरत में हमारे पास पर रह किया जाता है हम अपने इंटरनल सिस्टम को पॉलिटिकल एनवायरनमेंट को अगर बेहतर कर लें ये जो एक पोलराइजेशन है सिस्टम के अंदर उसको बेहतर कर लें और एक अननेसेसरी इंटरवेंशन बाय सम ऑफ द सिचुएशंस इन द पॉलिटिकल एनवायरनमेंट ऑफ द कंट्री व्हिच इज इन फैक्ट वेरी हजर्डस वी हैव टू स्टॉप इट सो दैट कुछ तो ग्रो करे यार कभी कभी तो हम ऊपर भी आए हमारा भी मैं एक जुमला बयान करता हूं इसी पे एंड करूंगा यार कि नेशनल कॉलेज ऑफ आर्ट्स लाहौर में मुझे यकीन है कि आप सब लोगों ने देखा होगा उसका एक एम्बलम है उसके ऊपर लेटन के अंदर एक लफ्ज लिखा गया है आई हैव आल्सो एन इन बॉर्न राइट टू बिकम अ ग्रेट पर्सन यार हमारे पास भी ये राइट है कि हम एक ग्रेट नेशन बने हम भी कभी सुकून के सांस ले सकें हमारे यहां भी कोई डेवलप हो सके पॉलिटिकल इंस्टीट्यूशन हमारे यहाँ भी कोई आ, 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 कोई पॉलिटिकली और रिग्ड इलेक्शन के बगैर लोग इलेक्ट होके आगे आ सके प्लीज खुदारा ये चीजें हम सारों को मिलके इस चीज पे सोचने की जरूरत है यू वांट टू हैव माय टेक ऑन दैट बिकॉज दिस वाज नॉट अ क्वेश्चन तो मैं समझता हूँ कि प्लीज गिव अस दिस राइट हमारा ये हक है कि हम डिवेलप्ड हों हमारा ये इनबिल्ट हक है कि हम एक पाकिस्तानी की सूरत में दुनिया के अंदर अपने आप को मनवाए क्यों हम जहां पर जाते हैं हमारे लिए पासपोर्ट ग्रीन देखते हैं तो फिर उसके बाद हमारा क्या आशा होता है तो आ, आ, मैं यकीन आपके साथ आ, आ, ये आ, जिसे आप कह सकते हैं कि आपके साथ मैं मुतफिक हूँ कि हमारे पॉलिटिकल इंस्टीट्यूशन को डेवलप करने के लिए कोई स्पेस नहीं दी जा रही खुदा के लिए ये दी जानी चाहिए ताकि ये अगले दस साल तक जो लड़ते रहे हैं लड़ रहे हैं ये दस साल के बाद तो कम अज कम खत्म हो जाएगी ना बट इफ यू कंटिन्यू अनबेटेड विद दिस काइंड ऑफ यू सी इंटरफेस इन दोलिटिकल एनवायरमेंट I don't see any good thing at the end of the tunnel, even after 50 years. I, I agree on this, and whenever um, I'm interacting with or lecturing in an institution where the military personnel are there, or people from the defence are there, I most of the time, in fact, talk about that. And on my social media, I have also been somehow advocating it that uh, until and unless we equate our education. budget with our defense budget i don't think we would be able to develop we have to of course create an equation between these two you see the situation is that 1.5% of your budget is devoted to education and higher education and you know about that that what is in fact the military spending in terms of our budget threshold i give you example from some parts of the world for instance uh, our own country that used to be our own country before 1971 um they are spending 14% on their education and uh, just 6% on the defense you can take example of some other parts of the world where you can see that uh, uh, education in these kind of uh, institutions that are are the sectors that are in fact uh, considered to be the future of our nation future of our country they are spending more on that you can take example of even uk more than 4% is being spent on education 
and less than much less than that is in fact for the, their defense spending and with that spending in fact they are reaching to every nook and corner of the world with the help of nato so we have to consider this aspect that spending in in militarism is an expenditure and spending in education health and other sectors of the society is an investment investment with the help of investment you can accrue benefits after some time and you can develop yourself but unfortunately unfortunately this is very unfortunate that we are not in fact looking at other aspects of our society like health we have the most deplorable health situations or health conditions in our country and by spending in health you can reduce after some time the expenditure in the health sector of course when the people are very happy and they do not have any health problem giving them uh, uh, clean water for drinking and uh, giving them otherwise a very healthy environment so what will happen you will be in fact spending less on your hospitals and that's less spending would of course create a space for other you see sectors of society so we do not spend less on that and then we spend more on the cure of the people i think uh, uh, i agree with this uh, with this aspect that there should be an end to that i mean this enough is enough uh, we simply play uh, you see with the words and with the figures and then call it that we have reduced our defense spending because now uh, this kind of traditional defense is not something that is prevalent in the world where a different you see mechanism of defense are there you have to protect yourself from the western bad narratives because these bad narratives are not there so there is no question of any kinds of physical war in the world so there is no spending on the bad narratives that are created about you in the in, in the different parts of the world so you have to spend something on that but there is nobody who is thinking about that that with that spending you would be in fact reducing the chances of war with your neighbors even so we have to of course resolve our problems so that we should be able to spend more on the people because until because they are the ultimate people they are the ultimate if you are not spending on your society if you are not spending on your people of course who you will then rule how the society would ultimately be constituted so this is something we have to think about it and of course uh, the 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 noble souls and those who think critically and those who can talk about the country those who can those those who have you see pain for the future of this nation they should come ahead and discuss these matters with them and one more thing a very important thing is that we have to i mean from your uh, uh, point i was uh, just thinking about it that we have to have you see certain things uh, to 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 be introduced in our system number one is uh, who we are i mean if you go united states and ask someone that who you are they will be simply and straight away say that we are americans they would definitely be calling themselves american and who you are the second time when you ask them then they will say i'm texican i'm a new yorker i'm a californian when i ask someone from pakistan who you are i'm pakhtun i'm baloch i'm sindhi you see so why do they talk about things like that because we do not have in fact any kind of national identity so number one we have to work on the national identity second very important thing i mean this is a kind of you see a long term uh, solution to the problem that you have just posed second very important thing is that we have to bring about very substantial and drastic changes in our education system we are in fact made a literate not an educated one because you see i'm a phd doctor once i am playing very bad i'm driving very bad on road so what the man who will be just witnessing me in the one who is crossing uh, the signals in a erroneous way driving very recklessly what he would say oh what an educated driver uneducated driver is this my degree is in fact not on written on my forehead your behavior is in fact the one that in fact shows that how educated person you are so we are literate we are not educated so educated persons are always behaving in an educated fashion so this kind of you see very important thing that is very missing in our education system the third very important thing we have to introduce that to be able to good person good human beings and of course uh, uh, good individual society the third very important uh, from out of that and this will be the last one uh, i i i have been discussing this matter in certain form as well that we have to bring about various various serious changes in our political parties act why do we accept i mean political parties have become you see ancestral kind of thing you developed a political party you constructed a political party and then 
you and your family members and your siblings and all are part of it. We have to bring about some kind of change. I asked you, for instance, do you know that who is the head of Republican Party? Who is head of the Labour Party in the UK? Who is the Christian Democrat Party leader in Germany? I really don't think that any one of us would be able to know it. Even those who head the political parties, they never contest in the elections. While we are talking about it, that we have to have the fourth time prime ministership option available and fifth time prime ministership available. Until the time we are there, we will be the everything in a political party and we will be holding all the positions. No, this doesn't happen. This is not, in fact, the norms of a developed society. So we have to have some kind of changes in our political parties act. So who would be doing it? Of course, those who are sitting in the assemblies, but they would not do it, sir. So this is what we have to raise the points. We have to discuss it. Why this kind of political party is in fact uh, kept hostage by those who in fact created them? Maybe ban sakuna yar kisi political party ka member, aap bhi ban sakein, kabhi aap bhi kisi political party ko head kar sakein. To ye sab chizhe mein samajta hoon ke bada zuri hai, mein ye teen important points tii hai, agar inko agar hum, mein kehna hoon ke kisi level pe, ke humari identity hi pata honi chahiye. Mein Jameel Jalbi ke alfaz kehta hoon ke we are from an agricultural society and the wishes of the people of the society are that of industrial one. What we are, we don't know. What we were, even we don't know about them. Whatever we are is something not original. And what we used to be is not visible anymore, unfortunately. Nibulous society, we have to give a responsibility to the nation. We have given an identity 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 to the nation. May I play but you could identity tell you who you are. They should be very proudly saying that I'm a Pakistani. Europe may jate him, kissy Pakistani, but just in the bit of the house. I'm a Brit. Let me out to your Pakistan. Can I get in? My parents were from Pakistan. Any up and does a kind of a kya language him a happy jacket with you. Or I'd be happy. I got a target. They came to Pakistan near or Pakistani as a title to any Pakistani is a shame. Within our country, it is a shame for us. So we have to, of course, make people proud to be Pakistanis. And how will we make it? What strategy we have to have? We have to think about it. Because once we start thinking about that, of course, we will not give any space to anyone who would destroy this identity and would be, in fact, replacing it any, with, with any other concocted kind of UCI identity to this nation. In this way, we use a term in this world, securitization. Securitization, what is it? In fact, you concoct the enemies to be able to, in fact, introduce those stringent players in the system, which you think are there to, to help you survive in the, in the whole process. Just um, for instance, what do you do when you have a terrorist in a place, then you have to do some legislation for you. If you have to do some damage, then you have to do some military courts for you. آپ کو ایسی سیچویشن کریئٹ کر دیتے ہیں جو کہ سبورسیو ایکٹیوٹی ہو تو پھر آپ کے لیے اس قسم کی نیپ نیشنل ایکشن پلان ٹائپ چیز جو نا وہ بڑا ایزی ہو جاتا ہے کرنا تو دنیا کے اندر اور پاکستان کے اندر بھی اس کی میں کہتا ہوں کہ ملٹیپل ایکزیمپل سے بلے پر ہیں where we in fact post threat to the innocent people and then they accept any kind of you see repressive actions on your part or regressive action on your part تو ہم یہ ایک دنیا کے اندر بڑی common technique ہے that we are independence using this in Pakistan as well اچھا اب بطبی اس سے اب problem یہ ہے کہ ہم نے کیسے we have to come out of it of course تو کیا کرنا ہے اس کے لئے کیا ہمارے پاس تھی کا کار ہو سکتے ہیں آپ نے بڑی اچھی بات کی ہے کہ ہم نے کیا کوئی transparency ہم نے کوئی اس قسم کے establish کرنی ہے دنیا میں جہاں کہیں بھی آپ کے خلاف کو wars wage ہو رہی ہیں hybrid war, so we have to enact or erect some kind of bulwarks in the way. You see, there are some virtual walls that are standing. We have to create a situation that whatever thing comes from that filter and when it comes from that filter, it is easy to take these things. I want to give you a very interesting example with this quote. Now, you have to remember that the Taliban in 2013, the Taliban in 2013, the Taliban in 2013, the Taliban in 2013, 
YouTube दो साल के लिए बंद हुआ था अगर आपको याद हो और उसकी वजह क्या थी कि एक ट्रेलर दैट वाज कॉल्ड दैट वाज नेम्ड एज इनोसेंस ऑफ मुस्लिम जो प्रॉफिट सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम को उन्होंने डार्क लाइट में दिखाया था वो ट्रेलर इशू हुआ था यूनाइटेड स्टेट से नकोला बेस ने नकोला ने उस ट्रेलर को रिप्रोड्यूस किया था 14 मिनट्स ट्रेलर था मूवी भी नहीं थी पूरी और यहां पाकिस्तान में उस पे लोगों ने रिएक्शन शो किया एंड एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ दोस रिएक्शंस 25 people got killed in pakistan and more than 125 people got in the entire muslim world acha ab uske sir ye ye badi aapke is sawal se cheez zehn mein aa rahi hai ke duniya ne jahan kahin bhi hai pakistan mein humne kya kiya ke chuke wo offload nahi kar raha tha google youtube offload usko nahi kar raha tha humne kya kiya ke humne youtube bhi band kar diya ke ab na ye hogi aur na is kisam ki cheez logon ko dekhne ka mauka milega अच्छा लोगों को देखने का तो लोग तो डेफिनेटली यहाँ पे इंटरेस्टेड नहीं होंगे इस किस्म की कोई भी चीज कोई भी नेगेटिव पोलेमिकल चीज जो कि हमारे प्रॉफिट के मुताबिक अबाउट माय रिलीजन अबाउट माय कुरान एंड अबाउट एनीथिंग दैट हैपेंस टू टेक प्लेस इन एनी पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड आई वुड नॉट लाइक टू इन फैक्ट लिसन टू दैट एंड वॉच इट बिकॉज इज सो पोलेमिकल सो नेगेटिव सो इंस्टेड ऑफ इनफैक्ट गिविंग दिस काइंड ऑफ एजुकेशन टू पीपल नॉट टू इनफैक्ट गेट एक्सपोज टू दिस वी इनफैक्ट वट एवर the option that were available with us that was to close down we close it down with the help of pta to pta ne apne filter laga diye ki aap koi bhi cheez to log jo cheez dekhte the wo mukhtalif qisam ke vpns istemal karte hue apni cheezon ko dekh lete the acha sir iska duniya ne aur phir aapki in request pe state of pakistan government of pakistan ki request ke bawajood bhi google ne usko offload nahi kiya isliye ki this was a very illogical kind of request वो कहते थे कि हमारी ये फ्रीडम ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन में आता है लेकिन हम कहते थे कि ये एक साइबर वॉरफेयर है जो हमारे खिलाफ मुसलमानों के खिलाफ शुरू की गई है तो वी नॉट अलाउ इट टू हैपन इन पाकिस्तान तो उन्होंने उसको ऑफलोड करने से इनकार कर दिया अच्छा दुनिया ने इसका बेहतरीन रिजल्ट निकाला रशिया में इसका अच्छा रिजल्ट निकला इंडिया में भी इवन बिकॉज देर आर ह्यूज नंबर ऑफ मुस्लिम इन इंडिया सो दे इन फैक्ट थ्रू असेंबली देखेड समथिंग अच्छा फिर आप टर्की में चले जाए आप रशिया को देख लें आप यूके इवन देख उन्होंने एक बड़ा सिंपल सा काम किया है ये इनके लॉ के अंदर मौजूद है जनाब किन के लॉ के अंदर गूगल के लॉ के अंदर ये चीज मौजूद है यूट्यूब के टर्म्स एंड टी ओ के अंदर ये चीज मौजूद है कि अगर किसी मुल्क की कोर्ट के कोई ऐसे फैसले होंगे तो हम उस किस्म की चीज को उस मुल्क के अंदर अलाउ नहीं करेंगे तो उन्होंने अपने कोर्ट के यहां से डिसीजन लिए गूगल को कन्वे किए एंड दे ब्लॉक दो आइटम्स फॉर दो कंट्रीज नॉट फॉर पाकिस्तान बट फॉर दो कंट्रीज ओनली अब पाकिस्तान में क्या किया पीटीए ने लिख दिया हमारे गवर्नमेंट ने उनको लिख दिया कि आप ये चीज ब्लॉक कर दें और पाकिस्तान के लिए इसको डिलीट कर दें दे डिड नॉट एग्री टू दैट वी डिड नॉट फॉलो द राइट वे टू प्रोटेक्ट दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग जिसे आप कह सकते हैं ना कि हमारे यहाँ वो करने का जो तरीकाकार है हमें उसका अंदाजा ही नहीं है कि वो किस तरीके से किसी ने जाके उसके टी ओ आर्स को नहीं पड़ा कि यार आप इस किस्म का कोई कोर्ट में चले जाए और वहां पर यह कह दें रशिया के अंदर मैं सर आपको एग्जाम्पल दे रहा हूँ ये इंटरनेट पर यह चीज अवेलेबल है आप उसको देख सकते हैं रशिया कोर्ट में गए आपने वहां पर उन्हें कहा कि इस किस्म की चीजों को ब्लॉक करने के लिए उनको कहें गूगल के हेड को बुलाया गया वहां पर और उसको बताया गया कि आपके ये जो चीज जो भी आपने ट्रेलर दी है इसमें कोई आर्टिस्टिक वैल्यू नहीं है इसमें कोई एस्थेटिक्स का ख्याल नहीं किया गया और ये सारी की सारी जो है ना एनिमेशन है और किसी रिलीजियस पर्सनैलिटी की डिसफिकेशन है इसलिए इसको ब्लॉक किया जाए कोर्ट ने डिसीजन दिए ओपिनियन दिया एंड इट फॉर द होल रशिया उनको कहीं पर भी यूट्यूब बंद करने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ी सर सर ये आप देखें कि कितना आसानी से ये काम हो सकता है तो हमारे सिस्टम के अंदर अनफॉर्चुनेटली हम इस पे कोई बहुत ज्यादा सैवी नहीं है कि समझ सकें कि हाईटेक वॉर को हाईटेक वे में लड़ना है एक्सट्रीमिज्म को आप वेपन से नहीं लड़ सकते एक्सट्रीमिज्म एक आइडियोलॉजी है आइडियोलॉजी को आइडियोलॉजी के साथ लड़ा जा सकता है हाईटेक को हाईटेक के साथ लड़ा जा सकता है हाईटेक की समझ को हाईटेक की समझ के साथ लड़ा जा सकता है हम उसको जो है ना तलवारों के साथ लड़ने की कोशिश करते हैं स्लोगन्स के साथ लड़ने की कोशिश करते हैं दिस इज इन फैक्ट रॉन्ग वे आर डूइंग थिंग्स सो वी हैव टू कीप और कीप और सिस्टम ओपन हमने सिक्योरिटाइज नहीं करना कि उन चीजों को जो हमारे खिलाफ हो रही है हम उनको अपने लोगों के खिलाफ भी एक स्कोर जो एक टूल के तौर पर इस्तेमाल करें बल्कि हम उसको रिबट करने के लिए बुल तैयार करें ऐसी शील्ड्स तैयार करें जिससे हम उससे बचत कर सकें और हम टेक्निकली उसको जो है ना वो किसी चीज में रिबट कर सकें बजाय इसके कि हम इसको फाइट की फॉर्म के अंदर लें और वो भी फिजिकली